All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So we got a lot of interesting stories for you guys today on this first video um, that I'm posting in June. So let's get straight into talking about and breaking down the results of the 2019 Toronto Pro, um, which just wrapped up last night, actually. So the Toronto Pro Super Show is quickly becoming one of the most interesting um, and one of the most competitive, really, pro shows that's kind of later on in the competitive season because it's getting closer to the Olympia. People are trying to qualify. Um, and this is a show that a lot of people tend to jump into um, to get points or qualify for the Olympia. Now, that being said, there were a couple big names that were supposed to compete here that we did not see. So there was Antoine Vaillant, who was probably a favorite to do very well here. He competed in the show last year. Um, that was kind of his comeback show. He did very well last year. He was looking even better in his prep this year. But he tore his bicep, so he could not compete at this 2019 Toronto Pro, and he's pretty much out for the rest of the 2019 season. Um, so we did not see Antoine Vaillant. I really would have liked to see him here. Also, Nathan Diasha was supposed to compete here at the, at the Toronto Pro. Now, I believe the primary reason that we did not see Nathan Diasha here was he had some kind of eye infection which I guess is the primary reason we didn't see him in Toronto. Now, I believe he has his sights set on the uh, British Grand Prix, which Luke Sando is also doing. So we will see him there, supposedly. Um, but we were going to see him at the Toronto Pro and didn't. So there were two, you know, these were probably going to be top three guys that we didn't see here. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about the top six here. So winning this show... Yeah, Jonathan De La Rosa. So, I'm, again, I'm very happy for John De La Rosa. He just came off that win at the Puerto Rico Pro last week. Um, so, two pro show wins in a row, and he also competed at the New York Pro. Didn't do as well there, didn't look as good there, um, but he looked significantly improved here and also at that Puerto Rico Pro. Personally, I prefer his look at the Puerto Rico Pro, but he still looked very good here. And I think John is one of those bodybuilders that has a very, very good structure and physique wise has a very good physique that can be very competitive um, in a men's open lineup. And it really always comes down to conditioning for John. So when he does nail that conditioning, he's shown now that with the structure that he has, the physique that he's got, when he brings conditioning, he can win pro shows and he can win pro shows, you know, back to back, which is a pretty big deal. And I think if we see John with conditioning like he had at the Puerto Rico Pro, maybe even better than that. He's going to be a very dangerous guy at the Olympia. I think he's going to be surprising a lot of people, again, assuming that he comes in with this kind of conditioning. Um, I think he's going to be a top 10 guy at the Olympia. And I think he's probably going to beat some people that people might not expect him to beat. So if he comes with conditioning like he had a week ago at the Olympia, or again, even better, he's going to surprise some people. So just like last week, I'm very happy for John. After I made my video last week about the Puerto Rico Pro, you know, John even DM me and thanked me for the kind words. So again, just a really good guy. And it's always good to see good things happen um, for good people. So in second place here, you had Ian Vier. This is the brother-in-law of Chris Bumstead, um, Canadian bodybuilder. He's a guy that's impressed me a lot in the past. I saw him at the 2018 Indie Pro, where I thought he looked phenomenal, and that was one of the first times where I was like, "Man, this guy, this guy's going to be a serious contender." He just had a couple improvements that I thought he needed to make to his physique, but I saw him at that 2018 Indie Pro, and I thought he looked phenomenal there, and I think he looked phenomenal here as well, and deserved this second place finish. And overall, you know, he just looked very impressive. He's one of those physiques that has a lot of gnarly, dense, grainy muscle, um, and when he brings that conditioning, it really looks that much more impressive on a, on a physique like his. And one of the things that always stands out to me about Ian's physique is he's got some crazy delts, man. When he hits that most muscular, that kind of clenched fist or clasped hands most muscular, his delts always just look freaking insane. Um, so, you know, props to him. He looked fantastic here. Definitely deserved that second place spot. Also in third place here, you had Josh Wade, who just competed a week ago as well. We also saw him at the New York Pro. I think Josh looked very good here. Um, he's been working more on his V taper lately, and I think that definitely shows with his physique, making him look more aesthetic, making him look more streamlined, um, and making his physique just looking overall more appealing. Um, and I think that really comes across um, in, these, in these recent shows that he's been doing and the placings that he's been getting. Now, in four, five, and six, you have some lesser known names here. So, in fourth, you had Joe Seaman. In fifth, you have a guy that a lot of people were telling me was going to do very well here. Um, I think he's got a great physique, actually. Quentin Uriah, also known as Quint Beastwood. 
I think this guy, he's got a ton of potential. I think he's got a hell of an impressive physique. He's got a hell of a V taper, um, crazy small waist. I think overall he needs a little bit more size on the upper body and a little bit more size on the legs. Um, but the V taper that he's got, I got to say, I think is very, very impressive. So congratulations to him. I think that was a very good placing here. I mean, I'm looking down at my notes here and there were 13 competitors at this show. So even though some of them are lesser known names, you know, taking top five out of 13 competitors at a pro show, Pretty big accomplishment for a guy that maybe not a lot of people have heard of. And then in sixth place, of course, you had James Hollingshead. And then another thing, one last thing that I wanted to point out here is when I was looking back through some of the photos from last night, um, there was one photo of the top four here. And basically three out of the four guys in the top four are hitting a front double bicep with a vacuum pose. John De La Rosa may be a little bit less than the other two, um, but Ian Vier and Josh Wade, both bigger guys, bigger bodybuilders. I thought it was worth noting here that in this picture, they're both hitting vacuum poses with the front double bicep, which I thought was a very, very cool thing um, for more than half of the top four at a men's open show to be hitting a front double with a uh, vacuum pose, I think is very, very cool. So I definitely wanted to point that out um, in this video. All right, moving into the next story here. So Sean Roden, he drew a lot of criticism a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was almost a month ago now at the Pittsburgh Pro um, where he did a guest posing for Jim Mannion. Um, there were a couple other top Olympians there. You had uh, Rolly Winkler. You had uh, William Bonac was there. And, of course, you had the reigning defending Mr. Olympia, Sean Roden. And he drew a lot of criticism at that show because people felt he didn't really look that good. Um, people were calling him fat. They said in comparison to guys like Rolly Winkler and William Bonac, um, he looked, he just didn't really look as good as they looked and he's the Mr. Olympia and they're not. So a lot of people were saying it was unprofessional. There are a lot of top pros and former pros, um, that had a lot to say about this, but I really want to give Sean props here because this past weekend, Sean also did a guest posing at the 2019 NPC Bev Francis Atlantic States. So because we had the Toronto Pro this weekend, I was afraid this guest posing might get overshadowed and maybe a lot of people might not see it. Um, but I do actually wanna give Sean props here because I think in the very short amount of time between the Pittsburgh Pro and this guest posing, I think Sean looked tremendously better at this guest posing than he looked at the Pittsburgh Pro. I mean, he still didn't look like he looks at the Olympia stage because, of course, it's not Olympia time yet. But in comparison to that guest posing, I think Sean actually looks really good here. I think Sean has done a lot in a very short amount of time um, to really bring his physique in. And I think that's really just kind of a perfect example of what we were talking about, about, you know, this is something that Sean does every year in a very short amount of time. He's able to do a tremendous a tremendous transformation with his physique when he's prepping for the Olympia. I mean, we'll see him at guest posing even six weeks out from the Olympia, not really looking that impressive. And then at the Olympia, he looks phenomenal. So it's just kind of proof positive of what Sean Roden's able to do in a very short amount of time. And I think it's very, very cool to see that. So to everybody that's kind of doubting Sean Roden and already counting Sean out because of that Pittsburgh pro guest posing, I'd encourage them to take a look at this Bev Francis guest posing on NPC News Online because he, I think he looks much, much better here um, and doesn't look nearly as fat, for lack of a better word. I think a lot of it was water retention. I think he lost a lot of that um, when he prepared for this guest posing. So props to Sean Roden. I think he looked much, much better here. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today, of course, is going to be about Larry Wheels. It's been a couple of weeks, so I guess we're due for a Larry Wheels PR. Larry Wheels posted a video on his Instagram the other day where he hit a new bench press PR, 675 pounds or 307 kilograms, which he says in the caption there is a 25 pound PR. Now, for people that don't understand how impressive Larry Wheels really is, we've seen his squats, we've seen his deadlifts, we've seen his other crazy feats of strength. But if we're talking about the raw bench press world record for any weight class, just the, the, the heaviest bench press of all time raw, that's 738.5 pounds done by Kirill Sarashev back in 2015, I want to say. Uh, yeah, I think it was 2015. So Kirill Sarashev, this guy's massive guy, maybe weighs close to 400 pounds. Um, bench 738.5. So Larry Wheels in the gym is within roughly 60 pounds of the all-time bench press world record. Now, obviously, this was not done in a meet. It was just a gym lift, maybe just messing around. But still, you know, we've seen how crazy the squat, the deadlift, and all these other things are. But to be that close or to be within, you know, really arm's reach of a bench press world record and being as lean as he is and as jacked as he is, it's very, very impressive, and I just don't think people understand how impressive Larry Wheels really is. I mean, this guy, 
he's going to he's he's definitely going to go down as one of the strongest human beings in the history of human beings. I mean, this guy, I, people just don't really understand how freaky strong Larry Wheels really is. All right, moving on to the next story here. So we talked last week, or maybe, yeah, we talked last week about the uh, Pharaoh's War movie or uh, Hamlet for Ron that was starring Big Rami, Mike Tyson, and of course, Hafthor Bjornsson. Now, the official movie poster was released and Hafthor Bjornsson put it up on his Instagram page, which I believe the movie comes out in like two days. So it's coming out very, very soon. Now, the interesting thing to me here, there's a lot of people on this movie poster, but one of the biggest names, at least in the bodybuilding scene, Big Rami, is not on this movie poster. And this is something that I mentioned a couple days ago or last week in the video where I was talking about Big Rami maybe not being very happy with the fil the producers of this movie um, because they weren't respecting his time commitment and he ended up not filming um, some of the scenes he was supposed to film. He ended up stopping his, his portion of the filming. He ended up leaving early. So he had some kind of disagreement with the producers of this movie. And maybe that's why Big Rami's not on the poster for this movie, which I think is interesting because there's a lot of guys that, to us or to the you know general population are no-name guys, but then you've got Thor and Tyson on the cover, but not Rami. I mean, how could you not put Big Rami for the, for the official movie poster? I mean, with a movie poster, you want to draw attention. What would draw more attention than putting Big Rami on the poster of a movie? And speaking of new movies coming out that we want to see, Sylvester Stallone put up a post a couple days ago announcing there will be a new Rambo movie coming out titled Rambo last blood so he put up this uh little kind of teaser movie poster on his instagram a couple days ago and now he's posted a teaser trailer for this movie that's apparently coming out on september 20th so like a week after the olympia and i've got to say i'm actually really excited to see this so i'm going to roll that trailer for you guys right here at the end of this video and i want you guys to let me know what you think of this rambo trailer do you want to see it or do you think we should have uh left it with the last Rambo movie where he was already kind of old in that movie. But let me know what you guys think. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.